Welcome everyone, I'm super excited because in this lesson we'll start introducing smart pointers in Rust. To be completely honest, we already saw some uh, and used some smart pointers, but I didn't call them smart pointers. So we were actually using smart pointers in this course, but I didn't call them smart pointers, maybe to not confuse you. So. What is a smart pointer? Before defining a smart pointer, maybe it's better to define what is a pointer. So a pointer is this general concept for a variable that contains a specific memory address. And a simple example that we also have in Rust is a reference. When we have a reference to another variable, when we create a reference to another variable, for example, because we are using that variable inside another function, we are using a reference, so in that case, a reference is a pointer, a very simple example to, to define a pointer. Now, what is a smart pointer? Is a pointer we on steroids, it's like uh, cellular phones and now there are smartphones, a similar concept. They are data structures that act like, as a po uh, like pointers, so they, are, they are, po are pointers, but they have some additional metadata, so it's a pointer with something else. Example of po smart pointers that we already have seen so far, I'll mention two, one is a string, so <laughs> this is a big uh, uh, reveal that a string is a smart pointer, and also the vector. Each smart pointer that most of them are in the standard library, they um, are implemented using structs. Structs are a way to define objects in Rust. We made multiple lessons, but basically they are key value pairs to define something that we want to be <laughs> structured, hence the name. They can also be used to structure, for example, object. We will, we will make some lessons about object-oriented programming in Rust, in, in some lessons. Now, these smart pointers, they need to implement two traits. I remind you that traits in Rust are interfaces. If you have seen interfaces in Java, in other programming languages, it's a very similar concept, not exactly the same, but it's similar. The smart pointers need to implement these two traits, the ref and drop. The deref trait, allows an instance of this smart pointer struct to be used as a reference. And the drop trait is something that we man already mentioned when we were talking about memory in Rust. In this case, uh, the drop trait is implemented in a customized way for the specific smart pointers. How many smart pointers are there in Rust. I made a list, I think there are like 15, 10, 15 smart pointers. In the upcoming lessons, we will see three main smart pointers. They are in the standard, standard library. The first one is box. Maybe you have seen this because I've used that in some projects, in some, for example, in the full stack application, I've used this box T. What is box t? Box is to allocate values on the heap. And this is interesting because I made lessons so when I talked about the stack and the heap. If we want a value, for example, an integer to go on the heap instead of the stack, we can use box. Very interesting. So it's to force the value to be allocated on the heap. Why? Because maybe we want this to be handled in, on the heap instead of, for example, just on the stack. Another smart pointer that we will see in a couple of lessons is the RC um, smart pointer, which is uh, RC stands for reference counting, and it's basically used to <laughs> enable some superpowers to enable multiple ownership. Mind blowing. Another one will be uh, RefCell, which is a type that allows mutable borrows to be checked not at compile time but at runtime. So you see, smart pointers are a way to enable superpowers <laughs> in Rust. We can do with smart, it's like cheating. <laughs> we can use smart pointers to enable some specific features that maybe they are not intentionally given <laughs> to developer 
which is a beginner in Rust. We'll also cover the interior mutability pattern, which is a design pattern that allows to mutate data, even when there are immutable references. And also, we'll talk about reference cycle. Think about the reference cycles like when we have, I don't know, like a circular dependency, something that, of course, we want to avoid. So a reference cycle is when there are two references that contain each other. And this is, it should be absolutely avoided, okay? And uh, this is the last, uh, this is the, um, an example, a very quick example. So by default, when we instantiate an i32, an integer, um, and we assign this to the variable b, we don't need a box, okay? But if we type let b equal five, this, uh, we know that this will go on the stack because of the type of this uh, variable, okay? If we want instead to this to be stored on the heap, we can do something like this. So let b equal box new and the value five. So here we are forcing to put the value five on the heap instead of the stack, okay? We can do a quick uh, cargo run just to see if this is working. And we can see here, we are just printing this, okay? So we will start uh, introducing with some examples and we will see the use cases of the box uh, uh, smart pointers. But in this lesson, I just want you to introduce the uh, core idea. So in a nutshell, a smart pointer is a data structure and is a pointer that all has some superpowers. So it's to enable something that usually <laughs> we are not allowed to do in Rust. So if we learn how to handle smart pointers, so not to create our own smart pointer, but to use the existing ones, probably we can solve problems that uh, otherwise uh, we might get, uh, um, let's say, blocked or do that. And this is the end of this uh, super simple introductory lesson. In the upcoming lessons, we will start seeing and we'll dedicate one lesson to each of these smart pointers, box, reference counter, and the ref cell. Okay, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. In the next lesson, we will start seeing the box smart pointer and see you in the next video. Bye bye.